how to leave bad company for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we know from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that bad company does a lot of harm to someone. He compared a bad companion to someone who's got a, f a friend who's a blacksmith. Hot environment, the person's working hard, hammering away, he's going to be sm sweaty and smelly, not pleasant to be around and you know the sparks of you know you know the bellows and everything and all that could can affect you burn your clothes so a bad company is really uh, sorry a bad a bad friend right, or bad company in general is really detrimental detrimental for your deen it affects your relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the arabs have this saying a <clears throat> sahib sahib uh, your companion pulls from you and manjalasa uh, janasa and whoever sits with the type of people becomes like that type of type of person and this is seen you know you start you know uh, <coughs> like you see with teenagers that you know a teenager might have a, had a great upbringing and then suddenly the bad cool friends come along and then suddenly the, the, the dress code changes and then the attitude changes and then the vocabulary you know deteriorates and then you know profanity step in you know, this is the sort of action that, that happens. Why? Because people want to belong, and this is human nature. Uh, you know, so you're either in a group, in, in in the inner circle, or you're not. And so those who are not in the inner circle want to do their best to get into the inner circle. And then those who are in the inner circle want to do their best to stay in the circle, so they conform. And that's basically how people work. So the way around it is make your own circle <laughs> and make that circle a circle of uh, you know obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Or just spend time with good people. What if, if you spend spend time with a righteous person, you know, he won't be looking down at you or look at this pathetic person he doesn't pray all his prayers in the mosque or look at this pathetic person you know with whatever quote-unquote criticism someone like that is not a religious person right you know rather you want to be around someone who's going to inspire you right and la tashab illa man yadullu illa man yadullu illa man yadullu ala allahi maqaluhu I think that's a statement of Sidi Ahmed ibn Atta'illah, a secondary. He says, keep the company of a person who, whose words direct you to God and whose state uh, inspires you. So, you know, a person, and we're not talking about going and finding some, you know, old hermit <laughs> living in a cave somewhere, right? No, just someone who whose words or their company these things really inspire you i'll, give, I'll tell you a story about um someone who i knew um there was this man um i once went i was actually um uh, i was wanting to go for a hajj uh, from amman and it was you, know, you have to apply and it's usually quite difficult and uh, so there's this man you know he'd uh, He'd converted a few years before and uh, he'd been practicing the deen, you know, as best he could. And I went to his house once to help him, helped him with some Arabic and these sorts of things. Anyway, so we went together to go and uh, check if we got the um, Hajj applications done. And we, we sat there and we were just talking and I just expressed a thought in my mind about us having... Um, uh, you know we, that we owe a lot to the Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. People who, after the passing, during his life, helped him and supported him, and after his life, you know, they, 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 most of them left Medina to go and spread the the Deen. And you see, you know, I mean, I expressed this idea that had come to me, and he'd clearly thought about the topic, you know, really well in, in before. And he started expressing his thoughts on this. And there was so much sincerity in his words that it really inspired me. Like, wow, yeah, you know what? I haven't thought about this deep enough. We owe them a lot more than what we give credit <laughs> to them for. And, you know, so it's, it's something like this, right? So how do you do it? So there's either real company or virtual company. 
Virtual company can be a bit of a challenge because the virtual company follows us practically everywhere. So um, <clears throat> if it's bad, if it's bad virtual company, you're following someone and they're just not a good inspiration, do it for the sake of Allah. Um, if you can, if you've got some willpower, unfollow, block even, and out of your life. And and I've known people, young men. There's a, there's a student who I teach, and you know he has a lot of potential to become a very good person, mashallah. And you know he just uninstalled one of the, you know these these apps that was draining <laughs> his life of all energy, and he just uninstalled it. So if you can do that, great. Um, so block or uninstall, and this is hard. And the real solution to this is good physical company. And so you need to find someone, a group who have good traits, who have good qualities. And you know, don't expect perfection from them. But at the very least, they should have a desire to want to improve and be better. So for example, if you've got um, a religious friend who prays, but um, he wouldn't mind like if you got an opportunity to have a girlfriend he'd, he'd, he'd go down that road this is not the kind of person who you want right you may have you know someone who struggles maybe with his tongue a little bit but he's trying to improve this is better company than someone who's just completely casual with things that are bad and wrong and yeah I'll do it so what you know a little bit of this a little bit of that it balances it out no not the attitude you don't want that so that's the first thing that you, you want someone who who can inspire you and you know at the very least someone who's not going to pull you down you know you can both sit there and suffer together <laughs> you don't want that right and ideally have someone whose words whose uh, company can inspire you. This is where it's incredibly, very important, incredibly important to keep the company of scholars, which means go and learn from someone. Someone, and you know, the, the barometer is, is this person a, um, a reliably trained uh, scholar, you know, what do others say about him? What, what do other students say about him? You know, where has he studied? You know, do you know who his teachers are? These sorts of things. Can you find out? Or is it just some guy who turned up out of nowhere, right? B, look at what he's calling you to do. If he's calling you to do things that are clearly not, you know, geared at improving yourself, then maybe find someone else, you know, it's, 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 although there's benefit in sitting with, you know, all types of scholars, but someone who's teaching you knowledge, but also teaching you how to be better, that's the ideal type of person. And, and see, go sit with this person, how do you feel? When you walk in, how do you feel? And when you leave, how do you feel? How do you feel for a few days after? How's your practice? What happens to your desire to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it increased? Is it just, you know, does it decrease? <laughs> yeah. What happens? So is he inspiring you? And, <clears throat> and so that's what you want. <clears throat> so um, I once heard... Uh, it was a long time ago. I once heard Sheikh Muhammad ibn Yahya in Nineveh, and, and uh, he was at a friend's house, a friend of mine. He was at his house, and um, he he recommended to his students. He said, "You should have uh, one dhikr gathering a week. Like you should attend a place once a week where people sit down and remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala together. And if you don't have anything like that formally, get a friend, sit together, and." You know, just say some istighfar, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Send some salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La ilaha illallah, you know, a hundred times something. Done, right? All, nothing controversial. You're just making dhikr together. You can even do it quietly if, if that's, what, that's what you want. And uh, just, you know, because things when they're done in groups are potentiated. You, you benefit more from, you know, from the company and everything. It's also a religious activity to keep you engaged. And uh, so he said, and you should have uh, uh, at least one, or you should have one um, class of knowledge a week. And I'd say at least one. Um, I know people have commitments or whatever, but it's something to do. And uh, what you find is people, when they're engaged with knowledge and scholars and other students and that environment, then it's easier to remain in a righteous environment. 
And, you know, but if it's, you know, you turn up to a class once every three months, then you tend to get in touch with all the old friends and, you know, and all that sort of stuff starts happening. So a couple of classes a week or a bit more and just some religious activities, something to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with and it, it will go a long way. You will go a long way. Um, and sometimes, as I said, with, you know, make your own circle. And maybe those people who are really cool and good looking and everything and they have their circle and, you know, everyone likes them. Maybe that circle isn't good for you. Right. And to be in the inner circle of that, you've got to come out of the circle of those who are trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's not a circle you want to leave. Right. Because there's a higher circle, which is a circle of those who are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's perfectly achievable. Like, you know, if you look at the direct statements in the Quran, Allah says, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin wa yuhibbu mutatahirin. Allah loves those who repent and those who purify themselves physically. Inna Allah yuhibbu mutawakilin. Allah loves those who have trust in Allah. Inna Allah yuhibbu muttaqeen. Uh, he loves those who are God-fearing, those who are patient. Inna uh, yuhibbul Those who uh, are fair and just. And then he loves those. You know, Follow me, Allah will love you. So these qualities that lead to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what are they? The actions. People learn these actions and do these actions, apply these actions, and they become beloved to Allah. It's perfectly possible, right? And don't let this idea uh, come into your head that, um, you know, you can't get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, uh, yeah, so don't worry about it, you know. So that's that's the way to uh, draw closer to Allah and leave the bad circles. You have to... You know, try and find uh, find a better alternative. And if you can't find a physical one, a virtual one, right? Go take up a class, take up one of the classes that we have here at Seekers Guidance. Follow the tafsir that we do or, you know, follow something else, you know. You, you know, even if it's not Seekers Guidance, somewhere else. Someone who inspires you, as I mentioned earlier, and that will be a great, a great benefit, inshallah. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul